On this episode of No Show Prep Book Review, we're discussing Kings of the Wild by Nicholas Ames, read by Jeff Hardy. This is one of Ted's favorite books, I hope, because he picked it. So either he hates it or loves it. We'll find out together. Well, you didn't like it? It was, it's a book. We've read oh my gosh. To me, this book has a great number of one-liners that will make you laugh in public if you slip up and read it in public. In fact, most of the one-liners are so funny that in, unless it's taken in the correct context and you try to tell your buddy about it, they will look at you like you're a moron. <laughs> but the jokes are hilarious. It's like someone wrote down 50 one-liners and wrote a book about it. But I, I don't. I can't imagine using any of these in normal conversation. <laughs> no, no, goodness, no. All right. So first things first, Ted. Uh, you used you used Audible for this book. So tell me about the quality of the reader. Uh, you know this reader, he is fantastic. He. I don't think we've read any other books or listened to any of the books with him. But he's got a voice that just matches this this type of genre this is a, is a fancy genre and our character i mean our character lives because this guy read him the way he read him i have no idea what the author intended for the person to sound like you know um he's he's very good at voices there's multiple multiple characters in his book he reads very well you know it's very obvious when it's a lady speaking and when it's a guy speaking he does he's just very good now I'm going to step in for Ted just for half a second. If you're not a big audible person, my best example of what Ted's talking about is we have a reader who is complete monotone and uses the same voice for his male and female characters. <laughs> and if you listen to a romantic scene, it will literally be a quick excerpt. I'm going to pretend to be the reader. Hey, baby, do you want to do something tonight? Maybe. What do you want to do? Your eyes look <laughs> awful beautiful. Thank you. I'd like to have sex with you. I'd like to do that too. And you're trying to figure out who's talking to who because <laughs> they don't understand that a male doesn't sound like a female. At least it makes it easier for the reader. If you specify which one it is. Don't worry. We'll get so to that book too. Eventually we gotta, we gotta have some bad readers in there too. Yes. That's, morning, morning, y'all. Oh yeah. We'll, we'll hit that soon. Yeah. All right, Ted, so, man, Jeff Harden here. Uh, or, yeah. Jeff Harden. He's, he's fantastic. So give me a star rating. Is he, is he as good as, as he as good as, Senior Masters. I mean, he, he's really good, but I don't. We've never heard him in any of the books, so I don't know how he would do in another setting, another genre. Does he carry all the same voices to other books? You know, I, I just don't know. Is he but Scott he, Brooke? I don't know. I mean, because probably not. There's no only one. You know, no one's Scott Brick. I mean, but, that's, that's but Scott Brick sounds like a guy from Boston or New York. He, this guy, he makes these characters sound like they're literally in the medieval time period that they're in. Okay, this so, is just not. The I, same. I agree with you. Scott I agree with you. If, if you're a fan of like, uh, of if you're a fan of if you are a fan of fantasy and you're looking for for a guy who can do a golem or a giant, or, or a barbarian, this man sounds like he's right out of the 12th century. Yeah, he's the he's guy. He's got to figure it out. Yeah. But I do agree with you. He probably would not make a very good House of Cards reader, for instance. Probably, no. But, <laughs> I don't think so. I don't know, genre. but, you know, actually, he kind of slips up in one of the chapters. One of the <clears throat> one of the chapters, he, he says, like, chapter 12 or something. I think he says it in his accent, and he sounds British. I was just blown away that yeah, I think I remember that just being like, well, was that, is that actually him? Like, what was that about? Yeah. yeah. So it could be. Uh, yeah. All right. So let's, let's dive. Let's, let's go to the next topic here. Uh, I, I got to ask you, man, there's, there's so many good one liners in this. However, most of them are not rated G, and this is a family show. Well, this book is not rated G either. Probably one of my favorite ones they're talking about, one of the sidekicks. And he says, uh, he says, you still think you're the best sword of fighter to ever live? And he says, I don't think it. I feel that way until someone beats me. <laughs> and he says, well, then how are you going to feel? Probably decapitated. <laughs> and it is hilarious line because. we're I mean, and we're butchering this book. This book is so much fun. Yeah. So it starts it off. Is. 
man, the gang's getting back together, man. They even say even use the line, we got to get the band back together. Yeah. So these the guys band used band. to like travel the heart wild, man. They were the guys. Yeah. If you they had a the trouble guy. with the centaur, you called you called Gabe, man, Golden Gabe. And man, they'd come and clear Gabe. you out. They were the dudes. And it's right. a, such a such a, a, a mix of people because we have got a wizard and we've got Ganelon, man. He's like this. He's like the rock, you know, he's just yeah. invincible. Right. You got the front man. It's almost like talking about the A team, you know, and I think about it. We got the yeah. A team going on. You got B.A. Barabbas, man. Got face man, you know. Right. That's who I imagined for every character. Like, <laughs> if you say Ganelon, I imagined like goatee. I mean, I imagine the. The haircut from the big man, like yeah. lost his name. Uh, I, I I saw him with the jewelry, the fists, <laughs> like that's who I thought of. And then face, like I just, yeah, the whole works. And you're right, it's a super fun, think 80s action movie. Like Arnold Schwarzenegger hangs out with his buddy, he's going to go get something to get through the job. Well. Like it's an 80s action movie that is just full of a good time. It is a comic relief. Will Smith meets action movie, nothing serious. Let's just go have a good time and show the world. But, <clears throat> and I'm taking away from Ted. So, Ted, what was your favorite moment in the book? Like, what was a moment that, like, when I, I mentioned, hey, I want to think about reading the book, King of the Wild. What pops in your head? What is I don't know that there's just one moment. I just remember, it, it just, I just remember laughing throughout the book. The, the author and the reader, they're just such a good combination. One is so good at delivering the lines. The other one wrote. I yeah. just like laughing through it. There's, there's not really a good. There's not really a moment. I don't think that that pulls me in. This, this book is is uh, not set in reality. It's it's um it's very fantastic. It's it's not quite drawn as much as some fantasy, but things do exist in the book that don't exist in our reality. The author, um, this book is not serious. The author just brings solutions to the problem that don't necessarily weren't necessarily there before. He just there's a solution. Uh, it's very lighthearted and it, very, it goes very fast. It's a very fast. It, I mean, it's 17 and a half hours, 17 hours and 40 minutes. It's a long book, but it moves fast. It just, uh, you know, you kind of carry along. You start really, you get to know the characters really, you know, really quickly. There's a lot of backstory. They flash back a little bit, not real bad. There's not a whole lot of flashback into what we did before, but it's kind of, it's, it's getting the band back together. Everybody they meet remembers them from when they were who they were before. And they're not now. They're old. It's been 20 years. They've been sitting at the house. You got to go get the got to get the guy's daughter out of the big city that's being held hostage. So it's great. It's fun. Yeah, it's a fun book. Can't get away the ending. <laughs> so a friend of mine, she says, uh, whenever she asks me like, what kind of book something is, she says, is this is this literature meat and potatoes or is this literature junk food? And to me, this is definitely junk food. This is junk food. Absolutely. Yep. But boy, we don't we all love junk food. And, and you just want more of it. There is another book. This is not a book series. There is another book after this that follows along in this world. We haven't read it yet. But when I found out it wasn't actually the same characters, it kind of took away. Right. It, it just, there just happens to be somebody from the book, but it's not the same people. So, right. yeah. It's not a book series. It is fun. I recommend it. Highly recommend it. Especially if it's the middle of winter and you need some cheering up. It's a great book. So I read this 17 hour book in three days. I remember like coming into work exhausted because I listened to this book for like four and a half hours. <laughs> yeah. I remember looking at the clock going, okay, well, I can, I can function on five and a half hours. Like, I got another chapter in me. Yeah. Uh, it's hard to put down. Yeah. Great, great book. Like you said, the reader, the reader will transform you wherever you're currently sitting to the heartland. And it's a, I'm trying to think of the name of the series that's going on right now. Um, goodness me. So this series, this book is very much like the series The Witcher. If you've watched it on Netflix or read the three different books, the only difference is this is a super happy-go-lucky group. And it kind of takes that entire reality and flips it on its head where instead of it being a dark, scary place, it's a dark, scary place with a whole bunch of tough guys that 
make the entire dark, scary place a lot of fun to be in. So think that same kind of universe, just with a band of happy pirates almost. Like it's a it's a really good time. If you like The Witcher, you'll like the series. If you like that kind of that kind of background, uh, you'll love it. It's a great book. We will do books we don't like very soon. We're just both dreading doing them because we don't <laughs> like them. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this. Ted, thanks for letting me interview you. I think that kind of went a lot more both ways than I meant for it to. It's hard because we both read the books and we both love them. That's the idea, though. You know, it's supposed to be like discussion. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Idea. Like it. Click, yeah. like, and subscribe.